Good morning, extreme kids. So we all know about Adam, right? From Adam and Eve. And we all know about Jesus, right? The son of God. So did you know that there's actually a lot of similarities between the two of them? In the Bible, we can actually compare and contrast some of their stories. And even in parts of the Bible, they refer to Jesus as the second Adam, which is interesting. But I'm gonna to get to that in a second. I want you guys to watch the story of Adam and Eve and the story of Jesus in the desert. And I want you to see how many comparisons you can make. How many similarities or differences do you think there are between Adam and Jesus? And we're going to talk about it in a second. Stories of the Bible. Adam and Eve's sin. This is Adam. Hey. And this is Eve. Hey. Who were the first people on earth. They lived in the Garden of Eden, which was a beautiful place that had everything they needed. Adam and Eve took care of the animals and could eat from any of the trees in the garden, except for one. This was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and God told them not to eat from this tree. There were lots of animals in the garden, but the serpent was the most clever of all the wild animals God had made. Hmm. One day, he asked the woman, Hey, Eve! Did God really say you must not eat the fruit from any of these trees in the garden? <laughs> no! Eve said that they were able to eat from all of the fruit trees except the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden. For God said, You must not eat or even touch it. If you do, you will die. No, that can't be. You won't die, said the serpent. God knows that as soon as you eat it, you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. <gasps> oh. The woman was convinced. She saw that the tree was beautiful and its fruit looked delicious, and she wanted the wisdom it would give her. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some to Adam, and he ate it too. At that moment, their eyes were opened. Oh, no! And they suddenly realized they weren't wearing clothes and were embarrassed. So they sewed fig leaves together to cover themselves. When the cool evening breezes were blowing, Adam and Eve heard God walking about in the garden. Hi! So they hid from God among the trees. Then God called to Adam, where are you? Adam said, I heard you walking in the garden, so I hid. I was afraid because I was naked. Who told you that you were naked? God asked. Did you eat from the tree I told you not to eat from? Adam said, It was the woman you gave me who gave me the fruit, and I ate it. Then God asked Eve, What have you done? The serpent tricked me, she replied. That's why I ate it. Then God punished the serpent by making it so he would crawl on his belly from then on. He told Eve that she would have great pain in her life. Then God said to Adam that because he listened to Eve and did not obey what God had told him to do, his life would be very difficult. He would have to work hard to get food to eat, God said, for you were made from dust and to dust you will return. Then God made them clothing from the animals. But God knew that Adam and Eve could no longer live in the garden because of their sin. So he sent them away and closed up the garden. Come and see the temptation of Jesus. This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. Jesus was born in Bethlehem and grew up in Nazareth, where he grew in wisdom and favor with God and man. Oh, I see. Jesus was baptized by John, and God showed John that Jesus was his chosen one. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness among the wild animals. Oh, uh, having a 
Pardon, 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 Forty days and forty nights, Jesus didn't eat anything. So he was hungry. Satan came to him and said, Hey, if you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus knew God's word, and so he answered, No, the word of God says people don't live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And so Jesus passed the first test. Then Satan took him to Jerusalem and said, If you are the Son of God, jump off. Aww. For the word of God says he will order his angels to protect you, and they will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. Wait. But Jesus said, The word of God also says you must not test the Lord your God. Now. And so Jesus passed the second test. <laughs> So Satan took him to the peak of a high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and all their glory. Satan said, I will give it all to you if you kneel down and worship me. But Jesus said, Get out of here, Satan, for the word of God says you must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. <laughs> then Satan went away and angels came and took care of Jesus. And so Jesus passed the third and last test. All right, so Adam and Eve, Jesus. How are they similar? How are they different? First of all, in the stories, Satan himself appeared as a snake in one and as a shadowy figure who kind of looked like Voldemort in the other. They were the same person, different shapes, get that out of the way so anyway the story is about temptation right that's the idea here of this video is temptation what does it mean to be tempted by something what does it mean to say no to something that you shouldn't do what does it mean to stay away from things that you shouldn't be around like drugs like bad people like I don't know making poor decisions like lying stealing killing like, what does it mean to stay away from what's wrong for us and to say no? Because temptation is that wanting to do it. And it is tempting. Sin is tempting. That's why it's such a problem. If sin wasn't good, like didn't feel good, then we wouldn't do it. No one says, hey man, when I lie to my parents, it feels so, so awful. And that's why I keep doing it. Like, nobody says that. Nobody's like, oh man, drugs, they hurt. It's like rubbing sandpaper against your face. It's just the worst. So yeah, I do it all the time. Like, no, that doesn't make any sense. Things that are sinful feel good. They're not good. And most of the time they don't feel good after the fact when you're done with the sin. But while you're doing it, while you're engaging in it, you're around it, it feels good. That's the temptation, is that we're saying to ourselves, oh man, this sounds great, this looks great, this smells great, this tastes great, this feels great, whatever. You're saying, this feels good, this is right for me because of how it appeals to me. That's temptation. Adam and Eve were tempted by Satan the snake. Jesus was tempted by Satan the Voldemort. I'm just going to call him Satan Snake and Voldy Snake, or Voldy Satan. Satan Mort? The devil Mort? Vold, Volded Devil? The Voldemort? The Voldemort. We're on to something here, guys. Anyway, Person Devil, Snake Devil, both tried the same trick on two different people. One was the first man, and one was the first man to come and not sin and set us free. First Adam, second Adam, aka Adam, Jesus. So the snake tricked Adam and Eve by taking God's word and twisting it. Right? He said, did God really say you couldn't have any fruit in this garden? 
did God really do that to you? Did God really say to you these things? Should you really believe him? That's how d the devil tricked Adam and Eve. That's obvious, right? He said to them, look guys, God, he's a liar. He doesn't want what's best for you. Just do this thing. Who cares? And they believed him. Jesus, on the other hand, the devil tried to trick him. He tried to twist specific words of scripture, specific lines without the context, which means the surrounding verses, which explain the verse. Anyway, he tried to take these specific things and he told Jesus, hey, you should believe this because, you know, God said it. And Jesus was like, well, actually, I know my Bible. So, papa, get out of here. And it worked because the devil actually isn't trying to tell Jesus the right thing. Maybe that's another reason. Maybe that's another reason you should be memorizing the scriptures that I give you because then it'll prepare you against doing bad things later because then if you know God's word, then you'll be prepared. Anyway, I'm just saying stuff. I don't know. But Jesus had memorized scripture. Jesus knew what God's word was. He was the son of God. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. He was close to God. That's the entire reason he went out in the desert. So he was prepared for the devil's tricks. He was prepared for the Voldemort. Anyway, Satan, whatever. He was prepared for him. He couldn't be tricked by twisting words of God. It worked for Adam and Eve because... Yeah, you know, they were close with God. Like, God was in the garden, they were in the garden, hanging out, having a good time. But I don't think they really knew who God was. They, they never chose to follow God. In fact, the first choice they had to make, they chose wrong. I think when we look back and we consider the main difference between Jesus and Adam and Eve, is that... Jesus chose to follow God. Jesus chose to do what's right. Jesus chose to make good decisions. Jesus chose to worship God. Adam and Eve didn't. They didn't choose anything. They chose sin. Maybe our lives as Christians, as followers of God, as believers in Jesus, Maybe our lives are defined by our choices. Maybe our relationships with God are the key to standing against temptation because our choices should reflect our relationship with God. Hmm. I think I might be onto something here. You see, because Adam and Eve, they were in the garden that they were placed in, doing a job they were told to do, Living a perfect life. Like, they, there was nothing wrong with the garden. They had it good. But they didn't choose that life. They were just there. In fact, they had no knowledge over what it meant to do evil. So they didn't even have any choice to do anything wrong. So when presented with the opportunity to sin, they took it because they never had to choose to be close to God. When you make a choice... Your choices define you, right? When you make a choice, it affects your mood. It affects the way you think. It affects what you do. It affects the people around you. Your choices matter. If I choose to only eat junk food, I'm going to become unhealthy and fat. If I choose to only take part in, um, in things that are entertaining, but not necessarily um, educational, I'm never going to learn anything. I'm just going to make, I might be fun. I might be fun to be around, but I'm not going to learn anything. I won't become any smarter. In fact, I might become dumber. The choices that you make matter. So Adam and Eve, not having to ever make any choices actively to follow God. Of course they didn't choose God. They never knew what it was like to choose God. But then when we look at Jesus... Somebody who always chose to honor God, who always chose what to do was right, who honored his parents, who followed the commandments, who never sinned, who went out in the desert specifically 
to fast for 40 days, which by the way, is insane. You would not catch me fasting for 40 days because like from all food, absolutely not. That's crazy. Like I would, I would be really hungry after half a day. I can't even imagine after 40 days. That's just wild. All right. I would probably fall to temptation to Satan because like, listen, he says I can make rocks into bread. Like I'm doing it. I'm hungry. Okay. But anyway, that's beside the point. So Jesus chose to be in the desert. Why? To get closer to God. Why? Because the Holy Spirit led him there. Because he was just baptized. He believes in God. He, he knows about God. He is God. He's filled with the Holy Spirit. He says, I'm going to get closer to God. I don't need to eat anything. I'm going to just devote this time learning about who my Father is. Great things. Awesome things. And that's why he didn't have to fall to temptation because he knew how to choose God. He knew how to get closer to God. When we're tempted, when we want to do bad things or we want to hang around bad people or we want to do something that we shouldn't, we shouldn't do, if we want to sin, we're being tempted. When we're tempted, we shouldn't think of it as, this is something I can't do. We should think of it as, is this going to get me closer to God? Because if we're making the choice to do the right things for God, it's going to be a lot easier for us to choose to, do, to not do the wrong things for God. If I make a decision every day that I want to glorify God by how I live my life, then when I want to do something that's bad, it's going to be very easy, well not very easy, but it's going to be easier for me to say, I'm not going to do that because I want to honor God. You see, it's not about what you can and cannot do. It's about the choices that you make to get closer to God. Adam and Eve had to make choices to get closer to God. So did Jesus. So do you. So do I. And those choices that we make define how easy it is we can step away from temptation later. Because if we look at ourselves and we say, guys, I don't want to be tempted. I don't want to sin against God. I want to be close to him. I want to know who he is. If that's what we want, then we have to actively make choices to get closer to God outside of temptation. I'm going to pray. Father God, thank you so much for how you love us. Thank you, God, that you've just committed yourself to knowing who we are, to loving us, to being there for us. God, help us to make those same choices for you. Help us to understand who you are and to love you. God, even in my own life, I want to grow closer to you. I want to know who you are. And I want to actively choose you. God, I don't want to just say no to sin. I don't want to just say no to the devil. I want to actively get closer to you. So I pray for everyone who's praying this prayer with me right now, God, that they would do the same thing. That they wouldn't just say no to the devil. That's great. That's awesome. But God, I pray that they would also say yes to you. God, that they wouldn't just turn to you when times are hard and when they feel tempted and when they feel low, but they would also rely on you when times are good. They would constantly say yes to you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. All right, guys. So, do your challenge. Bring me back some evidence so that way you can earn your kid bucks. Remember to check in with Cooking with Kyle during the week. And remember to get your challenge done so I can do the one chip challenge for you guys come January. All right, I love you. Remember to choose God. It's the best thing you can do for your life. Bye, guys.